Okay, reverse engineering time. Uh, this is an Arduino Nano clone. Uh, the chip highlighted there on the top of the circuit board is the uh, Atmel Atmega 328, which of course is the basis of the Arduino. If you flip it over, uh, you see another chip, a, a USB to serial converter. Uh, this one's a bit unusual. It's from uh, a company uh, deep in Japan, and uh, it's known as the CH340. Uh, if you were to uh, decap both these chips as the start of this reverse engineering exercise, uh, you get the two dies that are in uh, those packages. The die on the left is the uh, Atmel processor, the die on the right is that uh, USB to serial converter. And of course, that's your first observation you can make. Uh, the serial converter is actually a fairly large die and gives some explanation as to why you don't often see uh, USB interfaces on the very inexpensive uh, microcontrollers. The function takes a fair bit of die area. Uh, let's just zoom in a bit into this USB to serial converter. Uh, we can sort of start to see the uh, die markings, of course, indicating it's uh, indeed a CH340. Um, zooming out a bit, of course, those are now the pad locations that uh, bond out to the package. Uh, that little array there that's been highlighted is almost certainly a memory array, and that's uh, probably a pretty good sign this is actually a microcontroller in there doing the actual uh, conversion, so a relatively uh, sophisticated part. Okay, well here's the Atmel part. The uh, bond pads uh, highlighted here in red are a bit different. They're uh, kind of grouped in the corners, which is fairly appropriate for the package it eventually gets put into. Uh, the big uh, rectangular area in the center there, of course, is a memory array. It's the main program storage, 32 kilobytes. Uh, it gives you a good sense as to uh, why vendors tend to limit the program size in cheap microcontrollers uh, as you put more and more storage in. It obviously occupies a significant part of the die. Uh, let's just uh, zoom into the analog edge of the die there. Um, almost certainly some sort of clock recovery, uh, clock generation system. Uh, there also will be in the corner here a uh, power supply. Uh, the die almost certainly would convert the 3.3 uh, volts to a lower voltage. So, Okay, what can you see from the circuit board from an engineering perspective? Uh, it's uh, two layers, and that's not a surprise because uh, that's the published design files, but one quick way of checking a known circuit board is to use a, a bright light like a flashlight and see if you can shine light through it. Uh, if you can, it's a strong uh, indication there's probably only two layers on the board. Uh, otherwise, you'd normally see a contiguous metal uh, layers, which of course would hide the light. Uh, very easy to figure if that's true or not, of course, is to grind the board down. And uh, we'll do that in a second, actually, to look at another couple of aspects. Um, but taking a look at the uh, photograph just before I grind the edge, you can uh, see the actual fibers of the... Uh, construction of the circuit board. Uh, let me uh, just uh, grind off a corner of it. Now this is fiberglass. You, uh, you grind it uh, with uh, underwater uh, type uh, slurry because you don't really want to release a lot of uh, fiberglass fibers into your environment. Probably not too healthy. Okay, this is the ground edge of the circuit board and of course you can see a couple of vias there. It uh, gives me my first sense as to the aspect ratio. That's one uh, important characteristic of circuit boards and that's the uh, diameter of the smallest via compared to the thickness of the board. Uh, we're looking at here is a very commercially obtainable, a very inexpensive process. As you get into really thick multi-layer boards, that aspect ratio can get incredibly thin. Uh, not this case here, though. Uh, inserting another photograph, uh, it's from a CAD system. I actually import the uh, edge of the board into a CAD program so I can scale it, and then, of course, I can do measurements. And I can measure, of course, the uh, thickness of the copper. It sounds like it was 60 uh, micrometers. Uh, and if I look that up onto a database, I can tell this is probably a... a two ounce copper on the edges of the circuit board, uh, which seems fairly appropriate for the uh, type of product we're looking at. Okay, well those are just a couple of uh, things you can sort of grab from reverse engineering and assembly, and hopefully that was interesting.